Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Eat Tucker. Come on, your last. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. It's like Jesus going to the temple. He's like, I gotta whip it! <laughs> Get out! Get, Get out! out! The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy sh- Holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't bleep it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's. It... You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been assaulted when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Monday. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Megan Fox. I'm sitting here in my my rice sock, my heating sock. Um, I have good news on the neck front, actually. I went to the doctor today. I went to a couple different doctors. I went to the pain clinic for trigger point injections. And then I went to the chiropractor and he was able to actually get my neck to move a little bit today. And he did this one thing that I didn't see coming. Whew, did it hurt? It hurt so bad. I was like, I feel like you just severed my spinal cord. However, um, I can move. I can now look at this. Look at, look at, I can move my head. I could actually check my blind spot on the way home. I was so excited for that. Um, so I've, I've got some heat on it, but I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling uh, like I have a lot of relief going on. So my streaming schedule is going to be a little weird for the next couple of weeks because I do have a lot of doctor's appointments to kind of get this neck thing under control. So I'm going to have like twice a week, I'll be out in the mornings and probably not able to stream until about this time. And then, um, yeah, I, I guess twice a week is probably what we're looking at. But anyway, I've got to get this neck back working properly. If you missed it on Saturday night, I did a Lego stream. Uh, with MLS and Valhalla. And as you can see, that is the result. I've got my little bonsai cherry tree back there. And it only took me five and a half hours. And I found out. <laughs> and by the way, it's really hard to build Legos and talk at the same time. Normally when I'm building, I am like just concentrating on it and listening to something, not being interviewed. And that was difficult for me to follow instructions and be interviewed at the same time was really difficult. So I almost didn't finish it. You definitely have to check out that stream though, because it was really funny. 
uh, I got really frustrated. I almost rage quit right at the beginning. <laughs> um, so if those of you who are wondering about this hairstyle, it's a little different today, as you can tell. It's kind of brushed out soft waves today. This is what happens when I just use curl cream in my hair instead of gel and mousse and all the other stuff. And I brushed it out and it actually looks pretty decent. So it doesn't look uh, frizzy. So I thought I'd leave it. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marcus says, thank you for the super chat, Marcus. I appreciate that. Says, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I really am. I was so scared for that adjustment, but man, whoo boy. After the pain went away, it, it's so much better. Wendy Bono, thanks for the super chat. Says, how are you feeling today? Well, I'm feeling better than I have in a while. So what I'm going to do today is, uh, oh, by the way, for those of you who know Chrissy Mayer uh, and love Chrissy Mayer as I do, she's a good friend and a hilarious comedian and a good YouTuber. Her father was horrifically murdered um, five months ago in Las Vegas. And that story is developing. There have been no arrests and there's a lot of um, mystery sur sur surrounding that. And Chrissy finally uh, came forward and told the public about it recently. And I just hope that you guys have reached out to her with some love and support. Because as you know, she is about to have her first baby in April. And just all the love and support and prayers towards her as you can muster because this is just a horrific development. I was very upset and sad to see that this happened. Um, and especially, you know, it's different. I did speak to Chrissy and, you know, one of the things that she said was losing her mom was very difficult, but they had so much warning because she had cancer and there were treatments and it was something that people were expecting or, you know, hoping that that wouldn't happen, but there was like a long goodbye. But when something tragic like this, like either an accident or a murder happens, there is no warning. There is no, um, you're not prepared. And she felt very pressured by police not to say anything publicly because of the investigation. And so that's why she didn't come forward. And so she's been carrying this all by herself. Her and Frank have been carrying this, um, on them by themselves for five months while she's been performing and continuing on with her show. Um, so I just want to, I just hope MG, you didn't hear. Yeah. She made a video about it. You can see it on her channel. I suggest watching it and, and reaching out to her and offering her your support because this is a really terrible time. And we're hoping if anybody out there has any information about what happened to her father, Frank Mayer, in Las Vegas, um, that they'll come forward and speak to the police. So, yeah. All right. What are we going to do today? We are going to watch the Ohio hearing part one, uh, which is hilarious because Jeremy hails and <laughs> has put it to a toy demonstration. And <laughs> because it's just audio. And he came up with this hilarious idea of animating it with toys that he has. And so we're going to watch the first part of his hearing for a protective order against um, Lynette Preston and John Cook. And the differences between the judges is it is stark. We've all been watching um, Judge DeThomasis and how he has handled the... Um, well, what would you call it exactly? How he has handled the protective order that Lynn, Lynette Preston filed against Jeremy Hales. And I think we can all uh, agree that that's been less than less than good. Maybe if I put myself down here. See, I don't want to make it bigger. Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Because I have a lot of windows I need to keep open. And I want locals open. By the way, meganfox.locals.com. Live chat is open. There we go. The live chat is open, the Monday live chat. So please do head on over there if you are a locals member. If you're not a locals member, why not sign up? Uh, promo code um, Tonsil Twins, all caps, for a two month discount on a year 
on a year subscription. All right, what am I building? So I am building this build in the three in one in the main street uh, Lego thing. And I have gotten this far. I have the photography studio done. Isn't it cute? I don't know what this is supposed to be on the top. I guess an antenna or something. So there's like a photography studio on the first floor and like, a, I don't know if that's an apartment or maybe a, I don't know. I'm not sure what's upstairs, but it's cute anyway. Anyway, and I'm working on the second building right now, but this was part of the, and I think it might be a flower shop. I'm not sure. See, there's plants and flowers and things inside. So I am working on this while we are watching what we are watching. All right, here we go. I just got back from the Ohio courts where I got all the audio of the hearings with Lynette. Yeah, you're going to hear the judge going off on her multiple times. That was a question you lost me at about se sentence seven. <laughs> Since it's just audio, we're going to have to reenact. And this will be my lawyer, Pac-Man, eating up all the ghosts. <laughs> this is me, Popeye, eating my spinach and saying as little as possible. I feel like we have been ta we've taken this toy thing to a whole other level, and I don't think that we can go back. I think, <laughs> I think all hearing watches now need to include toys of some kind because this cracks me up so much. Wonder Woman there? Yeah, that's the judge sitting on the throne, the bench. Something old Lynette here knows nothing about because all she has is a bucket. All right, is Lynette Preston on the call? Lynette Preston, it looks like you are speaking, but I cannot hear your audio. Turn your video on so I can see you, please. There's an E. Bailey on the call. Please turn your video and your audio on so I can communicate with you. If you do not, I will remove you from this conference. What you don't know yet, Lynette gave the Zoom link out to her supporters or fans so they could be in on the Zoom meeting as well. E. Bailey. Wonder who that could be. Right. Well, I will have to say, though, that I think that that these things all should be open to the public. And I don't know why the judge makes a big deal about it. Um, it is a public hearing and it should be open to the public. And if you're going to hold it on Zoom, then you should let the public in on Zoom. I've, I'm a big supporter of that. I, I don't understand why they make a big fuss about it. All right, Ms. Preston, can you hear me? Now I can. Okay. E. Bailey. E. Bailey, identify yourself, please, or you'll be removed from this conference. Okay, if she does not identify herself, then I'm going to remove her from the conference. So if you have a way to contact her, you might want to contact her and tell her that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Moral support. That's all. Sorry, Bailey, you can, or you can go. Okay, I'm going to remove her. Thank you. Do you have somebody else there in the room with you, Ms. Preston? John Cook. Okay. If Mr. Cook is there, then I need him to identify himself and I need him to be on video and or to leave the room. Yes, I'm here. Okay. We are here on two cases, 2023093595, Jeremy Hales versus Lynette Preston. Jeremy Hales is present in the courtroom, correct? Correct. You are represented by counsel. Counsel, you may identify yourself. Attorney Eli Heller on behalf of Mr. Hales. Thank you. And Lynette Preston is present via video conference, correct? Yes. Also present in, this is case 2023093594, Jeremy Hales versus John Cook. Jeremy Hales is present with counsel. We've already identified. Also present via video conference is John Cook, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Cook and Ms. Preston, do you understand why you are here? Yes, we do. Okay. Are you prepared to go forward with the hearing today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Prior to going forward, 
Did you get all of our paperwork that we mailed to you? I did receive a packet from via Federal Express that has been, I received one packet from the Summit County Clerk of Courts. The packet that I received is not identified. I mean, it says Lynette Preston. I don't know if there is another packet. I did not receive any other packet. I can, can you please remove the child, please? We do not have children in the courtroom. I can try. This judge is not going to take any shit at all, which is the way it should be. And uh, she should have been told in, uh, you know, in the Florida hearing, stop interrupting me. Do not talk over me. Do not talk until it's your turn. Uh, we don't, you know, no, you cannot go out to do diaper changes on your four-year-old uh, every half an hour who shouldn't be in the car waiting in a parking lot. I mean, hey, guys, I meant to say this, too, at the top of the show. Let me let me get this off my chest because this this really bothers me. I covered the Ruby Frankie child abuse case arrest and everything when that happened. And just recently, you know, she pled guilty. So did Jody Hillebrand. And they both got sentenced to four 15 year sentences, but they won't be served back to back. They're going to be all served at the same time. They'll probably be out in four to five years. All the evidence has now been dumped, and I'm going to do a stream about that evidence at some point because it is horrific, and it makes me angry that these two were allowed to plead guilty and get this sentence that is way too light for what they did. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I cannot help but see the similarities between this case and that case. In, in the Ruby Frankie case, you had people online watching her show, watching her YouTube uh, eight passengers or something on YouTube where people were saying, this is abuse. These kids are being abused. And they would call CPS and CPS went out there 12, 13, 14 times and never did anything. And the police never investigated because it was, oh, it's internet drama. Turns out those children were horrifically abused, horrifically. In fact, I think if they had not been caught when they were, I think she would have killed those children. Now that we see the 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 state they were living in and the thing and the diary, did you know she kept a journal of all the things she did to these kids? The wounds, right? The wounds from the handcuffs and the the binding and the ropes and the it, torturous rubbing cayenne pepper on wounds. Oh my God! Um, those two were ready. They were on the on the verge of death. I do believe that malnourished. There's interviews now. We have the husband's interview with the police. I'm going to go over all of it on another stream. I have to plan it. But I just want to say that if CPS doesn't get its act together and start taking people on the internet seriously when they call and say, listen, we've seen it's 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 different if it's, you know, like I, I realize some people have had CPS called on them wrongfully like this, like Tug, for instance, you know, the Amber supporters went after him and they tried that. They called CPS on him. But when you can see actual evidence of it online, which is we saw it of her denying them food and her um, not bringing lunch to her daughter at school and making her son sleep on the floor and all of this weird stuff. And a lot of people have seen similar things in this case uh, on the on the post that Lynette Preston puts on Facebook herself, that they're living in a shed with a four year old little girl who Lynette Preston says is medically compromised living in a shed with a bucket of poop next to her. No ventilation, no air conditioning in the Florida heat. And, and people are saying and calling CPS and they've been out to Lynette's 13, 14 times. It's like the same thing. When are they going to pay attention? When are they going to figure it out? When, when does a judge say, ma'am, why do you have a four-year-old waiting in a car for four hours? That's not appropriate child care. Why don't you have a babysitter with her at home? What this is, it's very upsetting to me, very frustrating to me that we don't have people in our, in our government take in child welfare, taking this seriously. Uh, and it just, it bothers me. So then now we're going to hear again with the child in the background and all of this chaos going on that's happening in Lynette's house. If you could call it a house, I don't know. But anyway, stay tuned for the uh, Ruby Frankie stuff, because I'll be doing that at some point. I want to read through her journal. It's pretty terrible. 
Do we need to reset this for a time that you can find appropriate child care? No, ma'am. I have no pro I have no other one that can watch her. She has a medical condition. We have no family here. Okay. So this court is not going to conduct this hearing. Is going to, John is going to take her back beyond this wall. Okay. So that she's not here. We're in our camp. Okay. Our RV where we live. I will address you each separately then when I am ready to speak with Mr. Cook, then you can trade places with him. All right, so this is case again 3595. So prior to going forward with the full hearing, the parties can enter into potential agreements, potential settlements. The first way that we can try and resolve this case is Ms. Preston, you could agree to enter into a civil stocking protection order. If you so agree, then the court could enter into that protection order. If that protection order is issued and agreed to, then if there are any violations of that protection order, then you could potentially be charged with the crime. I will be honest with you, and I do not know the answer to this, since you are located in the state of Florida, if there was a violation of this that occurred within the state of Florida, I do not know how that would be charged. Certainly that is not a problem that I would deal with. That is something that would be dealt with by the appropriate authorities. But you have the, just, just hold on. No, no, let me talk. Oh, I love when it. When it's your turn to talk, and when it's Mr. Heller's turn to talk, or when it's Mr. Hale's turn to talk, then I will address you each appropriately. Otherwise, yeah, she's not used to this. She's not used to a judge telling her to shut up. We're just going to be going round and round. So we take turns. My turn now. So you can, you can choose not to go forward with the hearing today. You can agree to enter into a civil stalking protection order. Do you want to do that or do you want to go forward with the hearing? I want to go forward with the hearing. Okay, that's all I need to hear. All right, the second type of agreement that the parties can enter into, the parties can enter into a voluntary agreement. If the parties enter into that voluntary agreement, there would not be a civil stalking protection order in place. The parties would agree by civil order by contract that they would agree not to have any contact with each other. Boy, that would have been the easiest and, and most reasonable thing to do, wouldn't it? I mean, let's just say for the sake of argument that your neighbor falsely accused you of stalking them or whatever, and it's come so far that you're now both in court and a judge gives you the option to enter into a voluntary agreement that you just don't contact each other. So nobody's going to get a stalking order against them. You just aren't going to contact each other anymore. By, by agreement. Wouldn't that be the reasonable thing to do? It, I would, that's what I would do, whether or not it was a, because then you don't get a criminal stalking order against you. It, that would have been the time to say, yeah, I want that. Yes, please. What, but no, you're going to keep on going with this? If there is a violation of that civil agreement, then the party who feels that that agreement has been violated could ask the court to hold the other party in contempt. Counsel, would you like to discuss that further? Would your client be willing to enter into that sort of agreement? We're just ready to go forward. Fine. So I'm not even going to ask you, ma'am, if you would be interested in going forward with that sort of agreement. So I guess Jeremy's not interested in that. I would have tried. I would have tried to find out. You know, I guess he's figuring it took me this long to get to court and I know she's going to violate it even if she agrees to it. Um, and so maybe he just doesn't want to waste any more time. But I mean, I feel like that would have been the, the first thing to do is to be like, make her agree right now that she'll just stop contacting me. We will cut off all contact so we don't have to go through this, you know. But yeah, I'm sure he doesn't trust her. Um, but sometimes it helps to have a judge tell somebody you are not to do this anymore. And if you do, I'm going to put you in jail next time, you know? Because both parties would have to agree. So we are going to go forward with the hearing. With that being said, hold on. Uh, Ms. Preston, can you see um, counsel and Mr. Hales in the courtroom? Yeah. Okay. Let me... The toys are so funny. I know. I don't know <laughs> why. Give me a minute. I need to fix a technology problem, and then our audio will work better. 
That is my that is my fault. So give courts me a and tech, man. You heard her being asked, do you want to move forward with this hearing? And Lynette says, yes, absolutely. Except when she gets into Florida, she goes, and he had an option to not go forward with the hearing. And he said, no, no. Um, either option, regardless. The first option was she just gets the, the civil protection order on her. The second option is there's a verbal contract. If she breaks it, she could still be held in contempt of court, but she's broken it so many times. Remember, it was her first that said, I am ready. I want to go forward with a hearing. All right. Ms. Preston, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Can you see um, Attorney Heller as well as Mr. Hales sitting at council table? Yes, I can. Okay. If at any time during these proceedings you cannot hear or you have trouble um, hearing the audio, then I need you to identify that for me. If you do not, then I will assume that you can see and hear everything that is going on in the courtroom. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is how we're going to go. Attorney Heller is going to present his case. At the conclusion of his questioning of a particular witness, I'll give you the opportunity to cross-examine. Prior to me giving you that opportunity to cross-examine that witness, I do not want you to say anything I do not want you to disagree because you'll be given an opportunity to cross-examine when it is the appropriate time. At the conclusion of plaintiff... LOL, this judge already knows what she's in for. I do not want you to disagree. I want you to basically shut your damn mouth. Can you shut up? Please just shut up. <laughs> in this case, I will then give you the opportunity to present your testimony and evidence. And after you, you present your testimony nice and evidence, then Mr. Heller can cross-examine you. And if you call any witnesses, you can present their testimony and evidence, and then Mr. Heller can cross-examine those witnesses. So that's how we're going to proceed with this hearing. Do we all understand? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Heller, are you calling Mr. Hale first? Yes, Your Honor. All right, sir, if you'll raise your right hand, please. I'll swear you in. Do you swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this matter under penalty of law? I do. Thank you, Mr. Heller. You may examine. All right, Jeremy, can you state your name for the record and spell your last name? Jeremy Hales, H-A-L-E-S. And Jeremy, this is a case involving Florida and Ohio. Do you live in the state of Ohio? I do. And do you spend some time in Florida as well? I do. I spend six months in Florida. Um, <laughs> Mr. Heller, do me a favor. Take that microphone and just make sure that it's in front of you because I want to make sure, A, that we're getting a good record, and B, that Ms. Preston can hear you clearly. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Jeremy, in addition to that, um, you, um, so you live both in Ohio and Florida, and are you registered to vote? I am. I am registered to vote. And you vote where? I vote in both Ohio and Florida, which is why I had confusion the last question last time we were in the courtroom. I have legal rights to actually vote locally in my local government in Florida, but my primary election, I vote in Ohio. Okay, look, I, I do want to say, I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding. Let's see. Janice Wingfield, thanks for the super chat, says, Jeremy said it takes both parties to agree to stop. Since Lynette said no first, it doesn't matter if Jeremy agreed or not. There's a small qualification here, and that is that Lynette was asked first if she would enter into a voluntary uh, protective order. That was the question. Will she enter into a voluntary protective order against her? And she said no. The question of will you enter into a voluntary agreement was asked to Jeremy first, and he said no. So the judge said, and so I will not even ask you, Lynette, if you agree, because it doesn't, we don't need two, two people to agree. Um, so the question though was, or that we do need two people to agree. So I don't even need to ask you. If he says no, then it's no. But the first one was a was a request to voluntarily be put onto this restraining order. It's reasonable to say no to that because you don't want a criminal thing. The second one, it seems like a good idea. But if Jeremy was at the point where he doesn't trust that she would obey it, well, then he has a right to say no. Um, that that's it, you know. But I think it was two different things we're talking about. One was the voluntary. Um, voluntary towards her will you enter into this restraining order voluntarily so i don't have to make the decision you just say okay fine i'll obey it she said no the second request was will you enter into an agreement here where we don't give anyone a criminal order uh, but we agree not to contact each other and jeremy said no so 
uh, that's where the, where we're at. Very good, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, so we're here because you're seeking a protection order from Lynette Preston. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, how did you first meet Lynette? Uh, I received an email from her stating that she was a fan and that she purchased property across the street from my property. And is this in Florida? Florida, Otter Creek, Florida, yes. Okay, and what was the first interaction you had beyond that email? Uh, first interaction is she stated that there was a tree down on her property and asked me if I would bring my tractor over to remove the tree. Later on, I found out she didn't even own the property yet. I was trespassing on the property. And after that point with, with Ms. Preston, did the relationship continue to sour? Yes. How so? So Ms. Preston relies heavily on solicitating donations. And one of the things that I do as a living is give towards the things that I'm passionate about in my life. And uh, I have not given towards Ms. Preston or others within her sphere of influence. And that is taking a negative impact in regards to my life and um, and it has just spiraled out of control in regards to that because I refuse to give towards things I do not believe in and I will not support. Okay. Um, and Ms. Preston runs some sort of charitable organization, is that correct? I think that is up for debate. But she claims <laughs> to run a I think that's up for debate too. and turtle rescue called It's a Shell Thing. And... Um, and one of the things that I typically would say, you know, what's funny about the name of that. It's a shell thing is that every time I hear it, I hear it's a shell game every time. Did she not know the, <laughs> the other connotation of a, sh of, of a shell game, a shell, that means a scam. It's a scam. It's like a play on a shell game. It's a shell thing, which is kind of unbelievable. Like that she didn't think about that. In my videos is I love turtles. And so I believe she utilized that to try and gain funding from me. Um, and so kind of with this, did you notice after you decided not to support her, her charity, um, what sort of strange things did you notice popping up around your house? Well, for example, uh, signs were posted all over Otter Creek calling me an Ohio guest with my name, Jeremy Hales, with confirmation of whose handwriting it is by her own family members. Um, there were public posts all over the internet, Facebook, uh, specific Facebook pages and groups were created in regards to hate and to incite um, violence and hate against myself and my significant others and let me let's break it up a little bit so you said that um signs were posted around your neighborhood is that correct yes sir i'm now showing you what i've marked as plaintiff's exhibit a do you recognize this i do i have the okay i will say this public postings on facebook and stuff i don't really see that as um harassment unless it goes past a certain point and maybe it, it does. We don't know. But posting signs around your neighborhood. Oh, yeah, that's that's bizarre. That's really bizarre. Because, for instance, like like especially in a defamation case, you're going right towards where the person is and lives and targeting their neighbors and stuff, which is a lot different than, I think, putting things out on the Internet, which would be available to, you know, anybody, not just not just people, you know not the people in your area, which is it's harder to prove defamation, et cetera. Making it though to be harassment is a difficult case legally because of free speech and because, you know, you now it's not free speech though to accuse somebody of a crime they didn't commit. But again, that would be something that he would have to deal with in defamation for in a defamation suit. Um, but I do believe that these people went far beyond um, and into harassment. We're just really not there yet. The signs is definitely one place to start because that's really unhinged. As far as though the Facebook pages, um, I think that's a much harder case to make. And, and it's one that I'm not real comfortable with. I just want to point that out. I'm not comfortable with saying that Facebook postings about me, especially if it's about Jeremy and he's a public figure, you know, they might not be nice, but you don't have to go on those pages. And unless there were some actual violence incited from those, 
I don't think it fits the harass criminal harassment standard. Um, however, there were other things in this case, as we will see. But I, those things just on their own, uh, I don't think rises to the level of criminal harassment. Um, the signs, though, we're getting closer. The signs in town. Uh, yeah, I did see that Lynette and John filed to dismiss the federal case. So he did bring his case uh, of defamation to a federal court. So he is doing that. He is doing that. And um, and that's the right thing to do when you feel like you've been defamed. The right thing to do is to go and file a defamation suit for sure. For sure. But yeah, it does get worse. I know. The original right next to me. And is this a photograph of signs that you've seen in your neighborhood? Yes, sir. So certainly, Mr. Heller, I appreciate what you are doing. I can't see it. And uh, clearly, Ms. Preston cannot see it. Nope. You're going to use the technology. Okay. Am I using the animal you're You are. Yes, sir. Would you like the actual sign? No. Okay. All right. Let me take it. I'm sorry. Oh, they still have a kid in the room because she doesn't listen. She does not listen. She's going to get in trouble again. No He's doubt you can hear a child in the background. Yeah. What? horrific parent lets any child hear this, see this, be a part of this. There are disgusting things that have already been mentioned, such as the signs and what was on the signs. And you're going to see this judge isn't going to tolerate it much longer. All right, for sake of time, I'll presume, I'll go with testimony and then I'll submit exhibits at the end. So, um, All right, ma'am, we are resuming. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, before we resume, can Ms. Preston pan in the room to make sure that she's alone in the room? Certainly, yes. Ms. Preston, who is in the room with you? Nobody. Don Cook was a liar. There. There's no being. I'm not, I don't want to give the rest of my paper to Mr. Hales for my protection. Okay. Well, the point is you cannot have anybody else in the room with you. You can't have there. anybody that's giving you information or answers so that's why we were there isn't in. there isn't there's okay. nobody thank you okay so mr hales the signs that were put up said things like jeremy hales needs to go no child race in levy county is that correct yes sir and by looking at the handwriting in that sign you also notice that it looks familiar to what other handwriting that you saw regularly Miss Preston has handwriting out in the front of her property with her address and donation box and package box, and it matches the handwriting. She has a donation box outside her house. It's strange. Okay. And so. We need a picture of it. Miss Preston, did you say something? Oh, boy. Oh, no. Okay. No. Yo, you didn't? Sorry. I need you to not. God, what a liar. Did you say something? She obviously said something. <sighs> Have any conversations outside of what we're doing in court? Give me one second. <laughs> um, we're going to continue with our questioning. Can you proceed, Mr. Heller? And in addition to posting these um, signs around where you live in Otter Creek, um, there have been other instances where Miss Preston has uh, exposed your personal information. Is that correct? That is correct. Miss Preston has exposed my phone number and my personal address. Um, and as a, what you do is you create online content. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is one of my many businesses. And you have multiple people who subscribe to your online content. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I have over a quarter of a billion views. Um, so when your personal information is exposed, what does that make you feel in terms of your safety? Extremely unsafe. Safety is our highest priority to the point of we, we, we at times, we hire potential uh, private 
security bodyguards, depending on where we at, where we're at, where we're going. And uh, our safety is uh, always, always a concern. And in addition to posting your, your private information there, Ms. Preston has gone out of her way to contact other places or contact people here in Blow Valley. Is that fair? Ms. Preston has taken this all the way to the mayor's office in Blow, Ohio, where I reside. And, and I talked to the clerk who she was on the phone with as well. And was that email given to you? Yes, it was. By the mayor? I'm muted, muted boomer. Look at these little lights. Look how cute they are. Look, aren't they adorable? The detail in these Lego builds is so good. So good. I love it. I love these little lights. I've never done lights like this. I love it. All right, let's go back. There. Um... I will mark it for testimonial purposes as Exhibit B right now, just saying for that. Um, with regards to this email, this email, again, was, was how do you characterize it? I characterize it as hateful, spiteful, vengeful, um, to incite harm, to remove me from the town, to, to uprise the town against me. And there are place, certain, you talked about online hate groups. Um, is one of such, what are the names of some of these online forums where, where people? Otter Creek Friends and Family, Otter Creek Friends and Neighbors, Heart of Otter Creek is another one. Uh, the Jeremy Hales against Jeremy Hales. John, John Cook has multiple ones. Uh, Lynette Preston has multiple ones where they are moderators. And there's, there's many. Many, but most of them either have the names Otter Creek in them or Jeremy Hales in them. And there's a large focus of these. You said Ms. Preston's an, an administrator. How do you know that? Well, by our own testimony. And you can go on to the pages and see who the administrator, creator, and moderators are. And after this behavior of posting your, your phone number, was that posted recently? It's been posted even as of the the last time we were in here for the ex parte. I believe that was on the 24th or it was the, I believe it was the 24th. I may be off on a day, but even. Okay, I have the email. Let me pull that up real quick. Let's see if I can make this bigger. All right, here we go. All right, let's see. This man has bullied our town clerk into a stroke. This is the email that she sent to the, the mayor of Ohio in his town in Ohio. He has bullied and belittled and humiliated me, destroyed my tortoise rescue. Let's move on a little to the next page. Oh, not the spinning thing. Don't do the spinning thing. Um, something allegation seven times all because I ran for a seat and he thought I might get it over Teresa Granger who had, hold on I'm doing this in the wrong voice who at the time was I was I thought my friend Teresa Granger who at the time was I thought my friend and I had been I'm um, speaking terms I had been I'm um, speaking terms with Jeremy I have no clue other than what happened or why this took such a turn, but you need to see the real Jeremy Hales, not the one he shows you and everything that he has said about the people. Oops. I went, went too far. <laughs> Here. Wait, go back. Why is it so small? Maybe that's my problem. All right, hold on. <laughs> hold, please. Why is this doing this? All of a sudden, YouTube won't play if for there me. There is an investigation. All right. That
We just got an urgent message from our local mayor. Ah, why does it keep doing that? All right. Aha, there we go. And the reason for getting to be the mayor, they were not following the laws in Florida for the EPA. They are not following the rules under the zoning permits, permitting. And so now they've given themselves the permits that they need. They have gave the vice mayor a permit that he needed that he was not getting from the county and from the administration because he wasn't following rules and literally stealing something. Mrs. Granger is under investigation in our town for not following sunshine laws and for doing bad things. All in my opinion, of course. But once you see the video, you'll understand. Thank you and have a very blessed day. <laughs> this is so unhinged. It's so unhinged. And you know what's really funny is that Jeremy goes to the mayor because the mayor calls him and tells him that he got this uh, email and he has to tell him about it. Like, let's watch a little of this because it's so funny. Okay. That's harassment. Even after they gave her a email okay. to send her whatever the, the note that they sent basically about yourself. Okay. And uh, fi finally they got through and then I guess she went away after she finally, they said, you know, she kept saying, it doesn't work. And they're like, you need to basically put in the right emails. But I, what, what they were trying to say. Oh, she wasn't even putting in the right email. Evidently okay. not. Well, that's no shocker there. Evidently no not. So there. the bottom line is they, couldn't wait to show me this letter and ask me if I knew who Jeremy was. Well, <laughs> Mayor Dan, do you know who Jeremy is? Uh, yeah, I happen to know who Jeremy is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I even told you I never want to be involved in the town hall here or anything. And now you're getting a tour. Now I'm getting a tour. So here I am. So um, you got a video. You got an email. What would you think? I <laughs> thought it was pretty crazy. <laughs> I just laughed. I mean, I laughed. I go, you know. Why would you, why would you even call another state? It's another state, another town, yeah. another mayor. Yeah, and, and what do I, yeah. you know, and whether I'm friends with you or not, what would that have to matter? It's like she's trying to basically say, well, you're, you don't know who you're friends with. I go, I think I got a better idea than someone that's calling to all this way to, to track me down yeah. to tell me that. Oh, so funny. All right, so video, I'm guessing the video is where <laughs> John Crook is trespassing on my property. And so what, what uh, that particular day when George and I were back in Florida, uh, my friend. So I just found this so funny. I, I found it so funny that like, here's the, this mayor. She thinks she's sending an email to, I don't know what she thought that email was going to do because it just made her sound like a lunatic. Like seriously, made her sound like a lunatic. Like, what are you, what are you doing? What what do you think you're doing here? I don't know. Um, but yeah, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. There are 1,500 of you right here right now. Please make sure that you have done that, liked and subscribed to the stream. Let's get back over to the hearing and hear some more of this craziness. Even as of that morning. Uh, Ms. Preston posted that she had just contacted the Summit County clerk and in Peninsula where Jeremy lives and it goes on and on, even as the day as we were here for the ex parte hearing. And in addition to posting your address and phone number again after the ex parte hearing, um, has she continued to make posts about you since being served with the protection order? Yes, she's made posts of dodging the actual overnight express package from the magistrate. And then she's made post of receiving from not the, recommended. Um, what do you, the process, server. process server. She's made post of that. She's made post that the ex parte means nothing in Florida whatsoever. She's made posts that she's talked to Levy County Sheriff. It means nothing that she, it, it just, it doesn't stop. It, it's nonstop. So, your goal in getting this protection order is what? First of all, safety for myself, for my loved ones, my family, my employees, safety for the residents of the town, and and security in my life again. Um, and again, along with posting your actual house online, 
Did part of that include posting the value of your house here in Ohio? Value of my house, which I take as an insight of thievery. And, and so especially when you travel to and from two different places, do you feel that this makes you a target, having your values and your your assets um, posted publicly? Knowing that I will not be at my home in Ohio for six months, I will be in Florida, it completely and totally puts a safety and security issue and breach of that for publicly posting my address and my number and my values online, yes. So with this constant pattern of behavior, what has this done to your mental health? Uh, it's definitely has put a complete and total strain on me personally, on my personal health, uh, to the point of even a strain in my relationship with my significant other. My significant other is in counseling now as well due to all of this. Uh, my employees are in fear. My employee in Florida, Deanna West, she has to record every single time she drives by their place because other individuals have stated they've been shooting at random vehicles. So my employee's mental distress is, is, is lacking as well based off all these situations, all these postings. Uh, it's put us in a position where we, we have to try and figure out how to spend more money to protect ourselves, protect our employees because we were stalked to Florida and we've learned from this situation been posted online as well. Now we've got to figure out another game plan. We have to figure out more game plans and what do we do to protect ourselves in Otter Creek? What do we do to protect our employees? What do we do to protect my children? Even my ex-wife, she's brought my ex-wife into this. What do I do to protect my ex-wife? Let me slow down real quick, Jeremy. Yes, sir. How is the Never. ex-wife into this? Hold on. Hold on, Ms. Preston, I've already talked to you about this. Please. I'm sorry, it slipped. Please limit. Please do not speak until it is your turn to ask questions. Are we clear? Okay. I'm sorry, it yes, slipped. Ask your next question, please, Mr. Heller. Let's How stay on track. How is Ms. Preston? brought your ex-wife into this. Lynette Preston has posted the information, particularly Facebook pages of my ex-wife, inviting others to reach out to my ex-wife, my oldest daughter, her Facebook page and personal information as well. So you believe the constant sharing of your information, posting incendiary signs, calling you a rapist, and continuing to um, reach out to people like the mayor has put you in jeopardy. Sir, she has posted that I have made videos telling people to murder her. This is out of control. I am in complete and total jeopardy. My safety, my loved ones, my employees, my family members. It's Okay, yeah, so that right there, posting that he has told people to murder her, um, that's a problem. That's that's definitely a problem. Um, again, it's it falls under defamation, uh, but I could see how that could also be, you know, seen as harassment as well. You know, if it's not true, that's insane. I mean, if someone really is trying to murder you, you should go to the police, not post about it on Facebook, probably. I don't know. That's just what I would do, but. Out of control. Are you asking? Hold on. And let me be clear here. There is only two people that are listed as protected parties. That is yourself, Mr. Hales, and this court cannot protect all of these other people. So let's limit your testimony to notice how the judge is telling jeremy to uh stay on track as well like she really is doing a good job being unbiased she she basically is pissed with everyone it sounds like the judge the judge has no patience for anything and she's going to tell you yourself and any other protected parties which is <laughs> Thank you. Um, so for these reasons, you're asking the court for a protection order? Yes, sir. And you're asking for five years, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, barring the opportunity to submit some exhibits with the technology, I would um, rest for now and allow cross-examination and then just ask to be heard on exhibits at the end, or, or how would you like to do this as a matter of technicality? Okay. Uh, what are the exhibits? Uh, Your Honor, I have Exhibit A, which is a photo of the sign with some handwriting. Um, I have Exhibit B, which is the email to the Mayor of Peninsula. 
Uh, I also have Exhibit C, which is additional postings since the protection order has been filed. Those are the main exhibits that I would I would file against Mr. Preston. Okay, let me see what you have. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to mark it very quickly. Okay. Will you hand me the color version? Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Preston, look at your computer monitor, please. Yes, ma'am. I'm going Trying to, to find. I'm going to show you to the best of my ability. This is Exhibit A. Do you see Exhibit A? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you Exhibit B. Exhibit B is an email. Uh, I can't see it. The email is dated August 22nd, 2023. It says it's from Lynette Preston to Nancy Holdsworth, admin at villageohio.gov. Yes, I did. I did write an email. Yep, I certainly did. Nope. Exhibit C appears to be a collection of posts. The posts have not been specifically identified by Mr. Hale, so I am not going to go through them and specifically identify anything. But those are Exhibit C. If Council wants to question further or identify those specifically, then I would expect Council to, to do so and authenticate any of those posts. Understood, Your Honor. Okay. I am going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit C for uh, purposes of verification. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. What is this? This is post by Lynette Preston on her Facebook page, Outer Creek Friends and Neighbors, which is truly just a hate Jeremy Hales page. <laughs> and are these screenshots of these messages true and accurate screenshots from these posts? Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to bring your attention to page one, the very first um, message here. Um, and this says in this message, it's from Lynette Michelle Preston, administrator. Is that correct? Yes. And you notice that in the top right corner of the or top left corner of the document. Yes. Um, and in this first post here, she makes specific mention um, to the temporary protection order. Is that correct? Yes, she does. What does she say about the protection order? She says, I want to clarify something for everyone. The order is temporary that he got on us, and it was fraudulent. Okay. Um, and so the, why don't you read about two more sentences? We did not make any signs. We haven't done anything that he claims. We do not have to run into our house as he drives by our house. Are you freaking kidding me? Um, and do you believe that this message was posted in a public forum after the issuing of the protection order? Yes. Uh, and specifically making mention to the signs, was that a complaint as part of your complaint for the protection order? Yes. Um, and in fact, the temporary order here is this protection order we're here for now. Yes. And so after asking for this protection order, um, Ms. Preston continues to, to post about this. Is this correct? Yes. I'm going to bring your attention to page three of Exhibit C here in the middle of the page. Um, and there are three more posts made by Ms. Preston. Is that correct? Yes. And what is what are those posts about? Are they about the politics of Otter Creek or are they about you? They are about me. Okay. Um, and so in this situation here, she continues to post about you, is that correct? Yes, sir. So based on these continued posts on you since even... Now, I wish we knew what the post said because it makes a big difference to me what was said. You know, if the posts are just about him and her not liking him, well, you know, that's that's protected speech. I'm having trouble finding window panes. I'm missing a couple of window panes from my, from my building here. I'll show you how far I'm getting how far I am. But like, I don't know why they don't go into the post or they don't read them, but it's, it's hard to tell. So I'm missing window pane for this. I can't find, and I'm missing a window pane for this one too, which is strange. I don't know where they went, but it's cute, huh? It's cute. All right. So anyway, 
it makes a difference, I think, what was actually said in the posts, but I don't think we get to, to hear what it was. And asking for a protection order, dealing with online posting mm -hmm. and stalking, has that behavior stopped? After a cease and desist, it hasn't stopped. After an ex parte uh, civil protection order, it hasn't stopped. Everything increases. So, in fact, that you also tried to seek out a cease and desist to stop this behavior as well? Yes. And at that point, nothing has worked? Nothing. Uh, and you said after asking and trying to get the behavior to stop, it actually gets worse? Yes. <laughs> nothing further this time. All right. Ms. Preston, this is your opportunity to ask any questions of Mr. Hales on cross-examination. Let me be clear, this is not your opportunity to give your side. You will be given that opportunity, but this is your opportunity to ask Ms. Ha Mr. Hales any questions you have on cross-examination. Do you have any questions for Mr. Hales? Yes. Proceed. Uh, Mr. Hales, did you see me personally post those signs anywhere in town? No. So then you cannot say that that is my sign that I did against you. I have stated here today that it is a sign that you created. Okay. I like that answer. The next question for you is, do you or do you, did you or did you not stand up? in a town meeting in Otter Creek twice and tell everyone in the room that they needed to have me out of town, that I was dangerous and that I was going to kill them. No, I did not do that. <laughs> it's on, it, so there is- no Oh, John's in the room. I hear another voice in the John's room. John's in the room. John is- Your Honor, I'm gonna ask for a contempt. He just said, uh, it's on video. And then, uh, you know, the judge here really should issue contempt because she can clearly hear that he's right there saying it's on video. She just waved off Ms. What I believe right. is Mr. Cook. Ms. Preston, was there somebody, me. is there somebody else in the room? He's talking to the baby. He was and I not. Can't, he's in the other room speaking to the child. No, oh, I'm just telling what you. What a lie. lie. Total lie. Ask her if she wants me to take her outside. Yeah, take her outside. I mean, should we hear that again? He's taking her out. Should we hear that again? Because he was clearly right next to her, right by the microphone, and he said it's on video. To the baby, and I can't. Let's go back. No, I did not do that. It's on video. So there is no video. He's right there saying it's on video, and the judge really should have held her in contempt for that. I hear another voice in the room there. Your Honor, I'm going to ask for a contempt. She just waved off Ms. what I believe is right. Mr. Cook. Ms. Preston, I'm was there somebody, is there somebody else in the room? He's talking to the baby, and I can't, he's in Lies. the room speaking to the child. So I'm many just lies. What a lie! Ask her if she wants me to take her outside. Yeah, take her outside. He's taking her outside. Come on. Come on. Peace out. The, the motion for contempt is denied. Proceed, but I will tell you that I, I am at the very edge of saying that we are going to continue this hearing so that there is a complete separation of your hearing and the hearing for John Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. So proceed with your questioning. If I hear another voice, then I'm stopping this. Okay. Do you know if the page, Otter Creek Friends and Neighbors, you said that that page that I have is public? It, do you know that? For, can you prove that my page is public? This is so stupid. Even closed groups on Facebook are public. Just because you have them closed to a certain audience doesn't mean they're not public because anybody in that page can take a screenshot of any one of those posts and post it in public. Or, and that's how Jeremy gets them. People take screenshots of them and send them to him. So by definition, it, it's public. A private, fa a private Facebook page is not private. Anything you put on Facebook or the internet anywhere, even if it's a private Discord or whatever, somebody can grab it and put it anywhere else. So it is not private. 
I'm not sure I understand your question. <laughs> you testified that I am posting these things against you on a public page called Otter Creek Friends and Neighbors that happens to be a private page, not a public, but you testified it was. What proof do you have that my page is public? I can testify that Facebook is on the internet. Anything posted on the internet is a public post. Good answer. It does not go away. Facebook is on the internet, ma'am. That, that wasn't my question, but... Um, <laughs> Well, that's the answer. You so did. you testified that you did not stand up in any meetings and ridicule me, belittle me, humiliate me, call me names, say that I was shooting bun shots off on my property. Okay, none of those things are against the law. <laughs> Humiliating, calling names, saying that she's doing things that she's doing. None of that is against the law. In any Otter Creek meetings, town hall meetings. No, I did not say what you put in your words. And I would like to know how I can get that in as evidence because I have the video. But, and then Mr. Hales, when, when have I ever asked you for any money? Okay, by the way, if that's true, if she has a video of this and like she can prove that he's not telling the truth, well, that's impeachment. And, you know, she would need evidence. This is why you need a lawyer, guys. This is why you should always, always, always get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. When? How much? When did I ask you for money? Well, I've provided the court with a screenshot where you asked for $65,000 to make John Cook go away and be removed from your life as he's an abuser. You've constantly have texted me and asked me for things that you've seen in videos. You've constantly asked me for, for donations. You asked me if my event at Half Mill Time to Grill where fans from around the world came, if you could solicit donations. Would you like me to continue? Uh, is it not true? Excuse me, Mr. Hales, but is it not true that I did not, in fact, ask you ever for any donations? I saw on one video that you got a leapfrog. One thing was asked for by from me to you. One thing. Never money. Get up. See you have. Hold on. Sustain. That was not a question. Please state a question. Did I specifically contact you and ask? you specifically for $65,000? Or was it, did you see a post in where it was, okay, if he's claiming that I'm doing this, sure, give me $65,000. Objection testifying. Did I ask you? Hold on. Or ma'am, in a post. Ma'am, if that was a question you lost me at about- I don't know how Hold that on. If that was a question you lost me at about <laughs> sentence seven. So oh your question is gonna be short and concise. Did you personally get an email or a text from me asking you for $65,000? You made a public post directed towards me in a group that is directed and communicates about me for $65,000 to remove John Cook from your life. Have you continued since, did you, when did you file this no contact order against me? Objection, earlier. the document speaks for itself. Okay, were, were you already, weren't you already aware? Hold on. I overruled his objection. That means Mr. Hales can answer the question. Okay. Your Honor, you stamped it on September 25th. Were we here September 24th? Or was it stamped the same day, September 25th? I, I don't answer questions. You can answer the question oh, to the I best apologize. of your ability. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the, the ex parte civil protection order was stamped in the courts on September 25th. I believe we were in court on the 24th or the 25th. I do know it was a Monday, and I do not have a calendar in front of me right now. It could have been stamped the following day. Again, I do not know which day that was. 
Mr. Hales, what, when, when did you find out that I had filed my protection order against you? I and, learned on October 8th as Levy County Sheriff went to my employee's home stating that you stated I was in Florida. Is it not true that you learned about the he, me uh, asking for a protection? Okay, I cannot stand it any longer. I cannot stand this questioning that she's using. Is it not true? Is it not true that it's like a double negative? You can't tell what she wants to say. I think she's trying to say, isn't it true that you did this or that? You don't say, isn't it not true? No, it's not true. I mean, isn't it not true? God, it kills me. It absolutely kills me. Oh, by the way, Squid Pro Quo, uh, who's in my locals group, she's decided that she is going to start streaming. She wants to start streaming. Squid, you have to tell me what you're going to stream about. What's your what's your channel going to be about? So anyway, she's Squid is uh, she's a moderator here. She's been a longtime moderator on my channel and she's in the locals and she's awesome. And we love Squid and baby Squid is like our little mascot in locals. And Squid's going to be doing her own streaming. So anyway, she has put out a she's launching a Give, Send, Go because she wants to uh, raise some funds to get some some equipment to start streaming. And I always support people who want to start streaming. I'll drop it in the YouTube chat. If you guys want to drop her a couple bucks so she can help, she can get started on her own streaming channel. Uh, Squid, let me know. I don't know what your channel is going to be about, but tell me and I'll tell the, I'll tell the, the audience. What are you going to, what are you going to stream about? Uh, here, let me put it in the chat. Squid. Squids GoFundMe. Is it a GoFundMe? No, it's a Give, Send, Go. Give, Send, Go uh, for streaming. But tell me what you're going to stream about. I would like to tell everybody. I don't know what your channel's going to be about. But we love Squid and we should support Squid. And I like to support uh, creators when they want to get started and doing some creativity stuff. I know that she's very um, creative. I know she does a, does a, I don't know. Don't you do like sewing kind of stuff? Oh, mama rants. You're going to be doing mama rants. Well, you have a toddler, so you have a lot to rant about. And uh, I, I fully support that. So fully support any of you if you want to get out there and try it. Section order the exact day that I asked for it, which was September 13th. I can't even you follow the question. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're asking. Who can follow were this question? Were you not notified September 13th, were the you day not? I filed for my protection order, that you were being served? Were you not notified on September 13th? No, the question is, were you notified on September 13th? Not were you not notified. What? What? An order. Let's go back and listen to that again. Were you not notified September 13th, the day I filed for my protection order, that you were being served an order of protection? I have never been notified of any type of order that you have filed for. The first contact that has been made was with Levy County Sheriff on October 8th with my employee in Florida stating that you stated I was in Florida and you had them attempt to serve me for an injunction. Um, so we're gonna, nice. hold, on. Nice. hold on, we're gonna focus in on what Mr. Hale's testimony was. I appreciate that there are things going on in Florida. The court's decision in this case does not hinge on what is happening in Florida. If you have filed a separate protection order against Mr. Hales in Florida, that is a completely separate court issue that this court does not take into consideration when determining if I would issue a protection order that Mr. Hales has requested in this court. So let's focus our questions in on cross-examination based on what Mr. Hales has testified to on his direct testimony, please. Ma'am, what I was trying to show was that I did ask, this as a retaliatory. Ask your, ask your questions based on cross-examination, please. How many videos, Mr. Hale, 
Hales, have you posted about me and my family and my and my child? I post daily videos about interactions in my life. Now, if you interact with me in my life, which you have as you've stalked me to mm-hmm. Florida, then that is going to be posted. My daily life is posted. Have you just recently put out flyers as of October 4th that um, show you're having a community uh, a community thing or some kind of fun and do not have a, a thing saying that you were I just never <laughs> what? This reminds me of this. Wait. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him. Uh, put, put, <laughs> she didn't admit that her case was retaliatory. She was trying to say that she filed first and he filed in Ohio and it was retaliatory. And he's saying he never got any notification of her filing. So, you know. I don't think she was saying what she did was retaliatory. She was accusing him of retaliating against her. Oh, God. Were you contacted by your fans? And, well, never mind. (laughs) What? What? Oh, shit. Public that you testified it was. What proof do you have that my page is public? It just need to be short and concise. All right, let's go back. Did I specifically contact you and ask you specifically for $65,000? Or was it, did you see a post in where it was, okay, if he's claiming that I'm doing this, sure, give me $65,000. Jackson testifying. Did I ask you? Hold on. Or ma'am, ma'am in a post? Ma'am. If that was a question, you lost me. Okay, we are, I don't know how. Hold on. We were we were already September here. September 25th. Were we here September 24th, or was it stamped the same day? So, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the the ex parte civil protection order was stamped in the courts on September 25th. I believe we were in court on the 24th or the 25th. I do know it was a Monday. And I do not have a calendar in front of me right now. It could have been stamped the following day. Again, I do not know which day that was. Mr. Hales, what, when, when did you find out that I had filed my protection order against you? I and, learned on and, October 8th as Levy County Sheriff went to my employee's home stating that you stated I was in Florida. Is it not true that you learned about the he, me uh, asking for a protection order the exact day that I asked for it, which was September 13th? I can't even follow the question. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're asking. I love that part. Were you not notified September 13th, the day I filed I for my protection part. order, that you were being served an order of protection? I have never been notified of any type of order that you have filed for. The first contact that has been made was with Levy County Sheriff on October 8th with my employee in Florida, stating that you stated I was in Florida and you had them attempt to serve me for an injunction. Um, so we're going to fo- hold on, my- hold on. We're going to focus in on what Mr. Hale's testimony was. I appreciate that there are things going on in Florida. The court's decision in this case does not hinge on what is happening in Florida. If you have filed a separate protection order against Mr. Hales in Florida, that is a completely separate court issue that this court does not take into consideration when determining if I would issue a protection order that Mr. Hales has requested in this court. So let's focus our questions in on cross-examination 
based on what Mr. Hales has testified to on his direct testimony, please. Ma'am, what I was trying to show was that I did yes. this as a retaliatory. Oh, she, and, oh, oh, she did. She did say that. She said what I was trying to show is that I did this in a retaliatory way. Now, that was a Freudian slip. She did not mean to say that. She, she meant to say I was trying to show that he did this in a retaliatory way, but she said that I did it in a retaliatory way. <laughs> <laughs> the transcript is going to be hilarious. That's so funny because he can use that against her. Uh, Jeremy, you can use that against her. Get the transcript. She was trying to show that she did this in a retaliatory way. She said that. <laughs> How many videos, Mr. Hale, Hale, have you posted about me and my family and my, and my child? I post daily videos about interactions in my life. Now, if you interact with me in my life, which you have as you've stalked me to Florida, then that is going to be posted. My daily life is posted. Have you just recently put out flyers as of October 4th that um, show you're having a community uh a community, a community thing, thing or some kind of fun and do not have a, a thing saying that you were a thing to do not have a thing saying something were you contacted by your fans <laughs> and well never mind <laughs> all right so the our document camera is working ma'am can you still see the people in the courtroom yes Okay. Barely, but yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and turn the document camera off. Thank you, Jason. Um, if we need to, we can put these documents on the document camera so that you can see them more clearly. If you want to see them, make that request, please. Proceed with your question. Were you? Are you talking about a deal with your fans about a T-shirt with line net L I E N E T T E on it? So to, to sell, you gave approval of to sell, to oh. give the money. Partly to Maybe we need to have a t-shirt that says Lynette on it. Are, are they selling? Are they, <laughs> are they, um, is that something people want? Because there's nothing wrong with making a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, Jay Trent on Rumble says, what's happening here? I don't understand. Well, wait a minute. Why did I just hear the basement door shut? Hold on a second. I'm the only one home and I should be the only one home. Well, what time is it? Holy crap. It's later than I thought. The kids are home. Oh, it's about to get noisy. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. To the town, part to you and part to the people making the t-shirts? No. I'm struggling. <laughs> Me too, Jeremy, so, me too. To clarify yeah, all of our t-shirts. No, just sales. wait, just wait okay. for the next question, please. And ma'am, focus on the I'm, focus on the testimony. I don't care about Mr. Hale's internet business unless it relates directly to his petition for a civil stalking protection order. I don't care what happens in Otter Creek unless it pertains specifically to testimony that Mr. Hales has given related to his petition for a civil stalking protection order. We are not here today, and I'm telling you both this, we are not here today as a general airing of grievances. We are here specifically on it the is petition not for a Festivus. civil stalking protection order that was filed. Do you hear me, people? It is not Festivus. So please focus your questions on cross-examination based on what I have just said. Ms. Mr. Hales, are you not, did you post pictures on the internet about me with a, my baby daughter in her diaper and claim that I threw diapers and garbage all over a road in, in Otter Creek? Dead dog road. Um, and you claimed it was mine. Well, did you? And you posted a picture of my baby's bottom. Yes, I've posted pictures of your child. Did you post 
post saying that I was throwing garbage on a road in Otter Creek to make the people in Otter Creek hate me. Okay, and hold on. We've already I don't think this. she needs any help with this that. This is not your petition for a civil stalking protection order, Ms. Preston. That is very yeah, I, I think we can safely establish that Lyn Lynette has no trouble at all making people hate her. <laughs> she doesn't need Jeremy for that. She literally does. She made all of us hate her just by, I mean, come on now. <laughs> you are not a nice person. I have anxiety over the roof. My child just fell down. This is not a very likable person. And Lynette, it's not Jeremy's fault that you have trouble with people liking you or not liking you. It's uh, literally your fault. All of this is your fault. Let me talk. That is venued in Florida. This is venued in Ohio. I only care about what Mr. Hales has alleged that you have done. You will have your time in court in Florida if there is a hearing set on your petition that you have filed in Florida. Please only focus on what Mr. Hale has alleged in his petition. And I will tell you, time is of the essence because my day ends at four o'clock. So we may have She's to like, continue it's better another hurry. date and time if we are not able I got to plans. wrap this up. So. Okay. Question, do you have um, other questions on cross-examination that are focused? Oh, my God. All right. So that was part one. Let's get to the uh, Super Chats. I'll show you. Uh, I've almost finished the second building. Let's see. So we have the roof is on now on the second floor. We've got those cute little, cute little lights out front. Love that. I think this is supposed to be like some kind of florist on the bottom floor here. There's like a lot of plants, like a little greenery. And then upstairs, this is cute little apartment with a kitchen sink and a stove. Look how cute. Look how adorable. Look at that sink. Fun. Okay. Yeah. I like this judge a lot better uh, than judge to Thomas's. I'll tell you that much. All right, let's get to the super chats. What building is this? I'm building a, um, it's a three in one Lego set. I already made the huge one. This is the next one that I tore it all down and then making this one, which is just like a little three building main street. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. It looks like there's a, so there's a florist. There is the photography shop, which I've already made. See? This one I have, this one's done. Photography shop. And then there's something in the middle, which might be a movie theater. I'm not sure. I haven't built it yet, so I don't know. But that's what I'm working on right now. It's the three-in-one. I already made the really big one, uh, but I tore it all down so I can make the other thing. Okay, let's get to the Super Chats. Ruth Mobley, thanks for the super chat, says you are a rock star. Keep digging on uh, w, uh, What the Hales coverage and take Tobias and L and JC down. Well, Tobias really does need, need, he needs to learn a lesson. Bonnie Heron, thanks for the super chat, says Mark Feather is starting a channel. Maybe your viewers can come up with a catchy name. It should be called Unfeathered. It should be, it should absolutely be called Unfeathered. All right. Uh... Claire Kershaw, thanks for the super chat, says pain is the worst, especially at night. I get how you feel as I have issues that cause pain on a daily basis, so get well soon, Megan. Yeah, it's not fun. Uh, I've been dealing with this particular bout since December. It seems to flare up every December. That's weird. Well, November. It started this November, but last year it started in December. Then it was gone by June, and then it started in November again. So I am getting a little stiff. I am going to call it quits as soon as we get through these super chats uh, for today. Uh, cause I still have to do my, I didn't do my, um, Fox Den daily podcast last night. So I need to do that. And then I also need to test out rumbles, new streaming software. Cause I promised them that I would. So I probably will do a short stream on rumble just to kind of test that out at some point today. Uh, I don't know when I will be doing that, but that's, it won't be anything interesting. It'll just be me pushing buttons and screwing things up. Claire Kershaw, thanks for the uh, gifted membership. Let me see if I can go on YouTube. They told me I could go to the YouTube studio and actually see who got the membership. Let's see. 
How do I find out who got it? Everyone tells me I can. Uh, no, I did not break my tree yet, MLS. It's still on my desk. You see it? It's right there. It's not broken. Um, I don't know how to see who got the membership. It doesn't, I don't see it in the, is it in the chat? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, oh, you know what? I probably didn't see it fast enough because that's been sitting there for a while, but thank you for gifting that membership. That was very generous. Jan Marie Harmony, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate that. Sarah Adams, my homo. Uh, thanks for the super chat. Just curious. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, fat neck? Curious. Well, I'm building Legos, you know, because I'm an adult that likes Legos now. Uh, John Komen, thanks for the super chat, says, I've had fantasies of Wonder Woman on the John, but this is nightmare fuel. <laughs> Max Lab, thanks for the super chat, says, I emailed. Okay, I'll check. Uh, Biff Thunder Muffin, thanks for the, that's a hilarious uh, name. Welcome to the Fox Den. It's weird in here. I'm warning you now. Uh, Pepper NC, thanks for the super chat, says, Fox, wait till you hear John Crook's testimony. He is zero, zero smart. That makes you genius smart. You know, we're, we're only aiming for medium here. Medium is good enough. Rick Friend, thanks for the super, uh, super sticker. Appreciate that. And Claire, welcome to the Fox Den. Super weird in here. I hope you're prepared. All right. I did make the turtle purgatory already, which is right behind me. As you can see, it's on the shelf. So we have the, the, the shed where Lynette lives with the child. We have the umbrella guy in the hat rack. Uh, and the shit shack is over here. We've got the finger fence over here. And Turtle Purgatory is up here as well with the futon gate and uh, the Salmonella Springs with the turtles with the trees growing on them. I have them all up on the shelves already. So I already did it. I already, <laughs> I already did that. Oh my God, the tree took me five and a half hours to make. That tree, that bonsai tree. Five and a half hours on MLS's stream on Saturday. It was crazy. All right. What time is it? It is 2.57. I have to get going because I've got my kids are home. It's time to make snacks. and I'm going to go put some more heat on my neck and not get stiff since I've had an adjustment today. So I don't want to have that. Uh, I don't want it to get worse. So I need to go and lay down. Okay. Thank you so much for coming today. I will have another stream where we'll do part two maybe tomorrow. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm going to try and get through all of these in the next couple of days. Tomorrow, I will be streaming earlier. I don't have doctor's appointments tomorrow. Thank goodness. I don't think. And then I can get through maybe a couple parts. I think I can get through a couple parts of the Ohio hearing tomorrow because I'll be starting at 11. All right. Let's see if there's anybody else who's streaming right now that I can send you guys over to. Did you like and subscribe? Did you like the channel on did you, did you do that? Because I require you to do that. And also check out meganfox.locals.com because that's where you're going to get all the notifications because YouTube is asshole and they never tell you anything. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be, I may do Ruby Frankie tomorrow, actually. And we might pick up the hails uh, the day after that because this Ruby Frankie thing, the evidence that has been dropped has just been insane. And I really do want to go over it. And I think it's really important, especially because um, I don't think those two got nearly enough time, not nearly enough time. So I'll think about what I'm going to, what I'm going to do. All right. Who is streaming right now? Looks like none of my, none of my peeps are streaming. Hmm. <laughs> Nobody's streaming right now. Oh, wait here. Broken Baker is doing Karen Reed. He is rewatching the first Karen Reed hearing. Okay, perfect. Go over and say hi to Broken Baker for me. And make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here today. Sorry it was a short one, but I'm going to have that a couple times over the next couple weeks because of the physical therapy and all the other stuff that I have to do. All right, I think instead of the normal outro, I think I'll leave you with Tug's new intro for me because I like that. I want to hear it. So, yeah, let's do it. See ya. This nigga even smart, dropping bombs on your news. Might drop fizz alongs by the press news. Mainstream spinning, but I won't play that game. A nuclear flow turning at you for motivation.
no flame. Megan Fox crushing all the talking heads as they spoon feed their paid piggies. Gotta keep them misled with blazing Lego pigeons. I see it all the signs exposed in the agenda. Miss these epic rhymes. Intellectual on the song on the mainstream. Modern the current. And burn water, but I'm spitting facts. Top shelf, sorting max facts, reporting news, and not like you make it. I'm award winning, and I don't have to fake it. Megan Fox, an authentic voice, giving the masses a hard hitting choice. That umbrella guy, hammering his song, while Megan Fox writes those wrongs. Now we hit the end of this tune. Then you never knew By the time I press Singing lies of proof Breaking stories While you're chasing hunches 